James Keenan is head of leverage loans and high yield at BlackRock, where he oversees more than $40 billion in assets here on Market Makers. Jim, good to see you again. So, you don't look at stocks per se, but the stuff that you look at is not far up the capital structure from equities. So, when we look at uh, the S&P 500 stabilizing that this morning, and frankly, trading in things like the HYG ETF for high yield bonds, does it feel to you like, you know, we're stable? <laughs> uh, this morning we're a little bit stable, yes, but I mean the markets are adjusting to uh, a change in policy, right? If you look over the last couple months, what you've seen is not only the Fed introducing a more hawkish stance than people thought, meaning that they might taper or reduce the pace of buying uh, faster than people thought and potentially even increase Fed funds rate, but the uh, Chinese government and the PBOC are starting to tighten liquidity in their system and slowing down emerging market growth as well. So the markets globally, both the rate markets as well as the equity markets are adjusting to that new framework. Well, when does it become when does it go from an orderly adjustment to a disorderly panic moment? Mm -hmm. It didn't feel terribly orderly yesterday. No, it didn't feel like an orderly adjustment. Yeah, I mean, it was a fast adjustment, right? But it was, um, I would look at the markets right now is everything is to some degree been fairly orderly. I mean, if you look at the VIX, it's gone up and volatility across all markets have adjusted pretty quickly. Yeah, we're back to um, days of 100, 200 point swings in the yeah. Dow. And the momentum is dangerous, right? I mean, there, it is a choppy market right now, and we've seen this before in the last several years, right around the same time frame we've seen it. Um, you're starting to see adjustment. You need to see the markets rebalance and uh, readjust to the increased level of volatility because the central banks have changed. Jim, what does this mean for the issuers, the companies that need to raise debt capital. It's been a record market for high yield and corporate debt in general. Uh, and leveraged loan market has been increasingly active. Is it possible that we may see that window shut for a while right now while people adjust and figure out whether in fact it's going to continue to be volatile or whether stability, we, you know, we find some sort of solid footing? Yeah. I mean, if you looked at the, the overall levered credit markets, I mean, they've been very aggressive, the issuers, about being opportunistic. So the last three years, they've refied a tremendous amount. And what you've been seeing more recently has been more opportunistic refinancing. Um, much of that, they can pull that back because they don't need to come to the market right now. So when you get a time of volatility, they can reduce the amount of new issuance because it's not like there's maturities coming due or they have to spend. Right. There's only a small percentage of the market that needs to do that right now. Within your world of corporate credit, which type of companies are you looking for right now? Yeah, we've been more focused towards U.S. and uh, more things that are more stable, things like cable and, and wireless and wireless infrastructure, um, where you have more stable cash flows. And you like housing? We do like housing. You know, I think there'll be a, the momentum will start to slow down a bit, but there's a real recovery in the housing market. Jim, I want to ask you a question, and I need to pull it up for myself, uh, about Fed policy in particular. Uh, Jim Bullard, the president of the St. Louis Fed, uh, had a statement this morning explaining himself, explaining why the, he dissented with the majority and disagreed effectively with the stance that Ben Bernanke took a couple of days ago. State contingent monetary policy, he said, is best central bank practice. Policy action should be undertaken to meet policy objectives, not calendar objectives. And what he was specifically arguing with, as you know, is this idea that the Fed should commit itself to doing things at certain times as opposed to when markets meet certain conditions. And the reason I want to ask you about it is because his concern is that that introduces uncertainty because what if conditions change? Can the Fed continue to stick to those targets? And if it can't, doesn't that make things difficult for people like you? Right. I think you are seeing that in the market. I mean, the reality is the Fed's forecast can change and, and has changed, right? And so uh, that it does have the, to do with where the markets are and the changes. I think what you've seen is, is each one of these central banks, not just the Fed, but the ECB or the PBOC, they're regional banks with regional mandates. And, and they can't determine what other fiscal governments are going to do or other central banks are going to do. So you have to be able to adjust. One thing with regards to uh, the, the policy over in 2010, 2011, is when the Fed said, we're going to buy everything, right? It dropped five volatility because you knew exactly what they were going to do. And what they've adjusted to it is that they can't control those factors. And so QE3 is more about, we'll put money in if you need, and we'll take it out if the market doesn't need. But that takes away a bit of transparency and adds on. And it can't only be about the Fed. There are plenty of other global risks right now. China overnight, we're watching those spiking interbank markets. Uh, Japan, there's still some bumpiness when it comes to the execution of this monetary policy. How do you factor all that in? Because it sounds like you have a lot of faith in the economic recovery, at least in the U.S. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, when we're talking about economic recovery, I believe we're, we're moving towards a world where you have more stability in a low growth profile, not necessarily a significant economic pace. Uh, and then you have to look at the pricing of assets around that. Uh, certainly in the last couple of days, I think in the last week or so, the, the, the Chinese government has shown a willingness to, to tighten its own standards in order to enforce change within its own banking system. And you are seeing that flow through EM assets. Jim, what happens if risk assets so stock prices, for example, credit spreads, return to where they were before Bernanke's remarks on Wednesday. What will that say about valuations? Will it say that liquidity really didn't have a role in where stock prices and credit was priced? Well, liquidity has certainly had a role. I mean, if you look at the 2008 financial crisis, I mean, obviously we've had a tremendous amount of liquidity. Getting that, here, but right, to avoid where we are right now. Right? And the amount of liquidity that goes into the system, right, if you put too much liquidity in at once, you're going to have short-term inflationary pressures. And we saw that in 2010, and that causes the private sector to kind of pull back. And now you're seeing some liquidity, but liquidity getting pulled back in some cases. And the markets are slow, but you look at corporate growth, and you look at economic growth, it's still slow and it's stable. We're not talking about rates exploding here because there's really not an economic, the, the, the economy is not growing it, right? that fast, right? And, and there's still so much leverage in the system that it just doesn't really have the capacity to grow at an, an incredible high rate right now. Jim, it's always good to see you here. You too. Thank you for coming this morning. You Jim too. Keenan is head of uh, leverage finance and high yield at BlackRock, oversees some $40 billion.